Hello friends, followers, visitors to the lair. I am Rob, uh, here in my basement lair, and I am giving my State of the Dungeon address for December 6th of 2018 uh, regarding the events that happened in the 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons game that we have been running with my regular group. And uh, the entirety of the adventure, for the most part, uh, took place in one room in one combat. It was a long, drawn-out, desperate affair that had several momentum changes and several moving parts, so I'm just going to illustrate and highlight these here for you. Um, and uh, you know, keep this as a record of what happened. The action started... Well, the action had been going on, actually. This was the resolution of the action uh, in the adventure of the Princes of the Apocalypse, wherein the heroes had infiltrated into the uh, Fire Elemental Cult Temple. And they were making their strike, not against the surface cover, that had already been blown, but they found a way to get to the temple by... Uh, going through the underground Dwarven City ruins and using basically a shortcut which got them into the perimeter of the temple. They had made a strike, they were repulsed, and I thought rather than going through a long, tedious slog against uh, you know opponents who were fairly superior, who could just keep peppering the party with fireballs until it wasn't particularly exciting or interesting, um, they got some assistance from uh, one of the characters, Terran, who was the warrior of the group, crossed over and picked up a level of Warlock. And now he's dabbling into some dark um, territories. His patron is the Raven Queen, because he's a Hexblade, who revere intelligent magical weapons and, and dark secrets. And... I have allowed, in the storyline, the characters are the de facto tools that the various gods of good are using to undo the workings of the evil elemental cult. There are several forces that are just slavering at the thought if the gods directly move in and take care of the situation, bad things are going to happen, which the gods of good and order understand that situation. So to preserve the status quo, they're working through, primarily, the heroes and other agents that are in the surrounding area, most of which are helpful or at least sympathetic to the group. And the Raven Queen is a relatively new addition to their conglomeration. She didn't have any direct uh, impact until things had escalated a bit. And uh, when one of them, Taryn, went seeking her assistance, she thought she could turn this to her advantage because she's not often involved in the politics of the gods of this world. So, hey, here's somebody who is offering to be her tool in the engagement? Sure. And he already had sacrificed quite a bit for that. I mean, this is legitimate role-playing stuff here. So, uh, so he, he uh, got her attention, and she's like, well, tell you what, I'll help you in your assault against this fire temple. They're like, okay. Now, my intention primarily was to make this as a boost to the horror aspect because it was my Halloween episode. However, storyline-wise, it was actually pretty entertaining because um, it let me introduce more characters, namely uh, undead uh, creatures that were dwelling in and around the shattered ruins of the Dwarven Kingdom so that uh, I could you know, have some undead creatures and, and make things horrible and, and uh, have the fire cultists getting slaughtered. Not that the party was going to feel all that sad for them, but you know, to really impress upon them the, the, the precariousness of their position. Um, so they fought their way to the actual temple itself, which Vanifer, the prophetess of fire, uh, was holding court. And they had begun the combat the session before, which was almost a, a, over a month prior because of Thanksgiving and other shenanigans that happened. So we, uh, we began the combat in the middle of the combat. 
It had, turned, it had gone kind of badly for the heroes. Terran was on unconscious and bleeding. Um, most of the heroes were at half health or less because the cultists had engaged in using fire spells, which work against an area effect. And remember, they don't have any clerics or paladins or anybody who has innate healing abilities, so they were sucking down healing potions to try to get themselves back into this fight, which caused some problems, certainly. Um, the monk, Oriana, was out of the room. She was drinking healing potions and trying to avoid getting caught in any more fireballs. Oric, who was able to dodge fireballs fairly well, was being put in one-on-one -on -one situations fighting against uh, the guards that uh, uh, Vanifer had in front of her. Uh, unfortunately, their sorcerer, Geth, uh, the player has some issues getting here in the time that we start, so he was absent. He wasn't a target, uh, he, he ran away to be defensive, but at the same time he wasn't contributing to the fight. Uh, the wizard, uh, Brock, the, the gnome illusionist, was limited in the spells that he had. The enemy knew he was an illusionist, and he wasn't doing any illusions that weren't obvious fakes for what his power level was, so he wasn't immediately very impactful. Um, and uh, the warlock barbarian, uh, Don Ludd, uh, had jumped through a portal at the back of the temple, which took him to Vanifer's private chambers. Um, which we started off, I illustrated him what he saw. Vanifer has um, some rather twisted tastes. I decided to darken her up a little bit. And uh, so as a result, she's, uh, she's a little twisted. And uh, I'm not going to go into any details here, but... Uh, her room was full of all the evidence of, you know, some of her darker tastes, including torture and, uh, you know, testing out her, uh, her new cultists. So, at any rate, uh, Donald was there and he didn't know what he could do. So, again, he's a warlock. He has a patron. He doesn't know his patron. Uh, his patron never really fully introduced himself, although the player and I had talked about who it could be. Uh, so, his patron chose to reveal himself. It uh, animated a brush. There was a, an, an easel and a canvas and some paints. It animated a brush and spelled out the name, Dispater. Dispater is one of the lords of the Nine Hells. Uh, rather dapper chap, lives in a big iron tower, and uh, yeah, it, it could be worse. He's not the most terrible patron, although obviously he's got his evil bents and uh, schemes within schemes. So he's like, um, he, he got Don Ludd to say his name, which summoned him, and that was the only way he could get into that demiplane extra dimensional chamber of Anifers. So he shows up and says, okay, well, you're doing okay. You're fighting the, the, fight, the fight I like you to fight. I don't want to see this world destroyed. That's, you don't get new souls. The world is destroyed, and the elemental chaos has no talent. They have no tact. They're just brute force. They just want to destroy. It's wasteful. Go back in there and kill Vanifer. But, just to spite them, here's a dagger. As she's dying, stab her, and therefore her elemental prince won't get her soul. Which, it will be both good for her, because that wouldn't end well for her, but also bad for her, because you'll deliver it to me. So, uh, and sent him back into the fight. He took a moment to drink a healing potion, which was not good for the rest of the group because that was another round that he wasn't there helping out. So, the rest of the group was was trying to fight. Oriana had drank, uh, drank a healing potion and then ran back into the room to help fight. Um, Oric was having a hard time because a, a rogue against a proper warrior doesn't end well for the rogue unless the rogue has some backup to help him um, getting those sneak attack damage attacks in. And also his armor class wasn't very good, so he was taking more punishment than he des definitely wanted to. It was a very poor situation for them, um, with Terran down. So then the Raven Queen played her last gambit that she is allowed to in this whole thing. Terran was down. Now when Terran had gone down before, another gambit that had been played was by his former patron, 
Hieronius, the patron of law and order and good. And he brought him back and gave him a divine weapon to smash the evil with. It was also his birthday present, so it worked out. Uh, but here's the thing. The Raven Queen knew that she could help him one more time and, and uh, you know, close off that gambit. So she asked him if he would accept her help, which he did, because at the time, you know, he's his life has been nothing but making sure that the good result comes out no matter what it costs him. So he's like, okay, yeah, sure. So she brought him back to his feet with 20 hit points, and she turned him into a shade. She infused him with necrotic energy. That is her thing. And so now he's living a half-life. Um, she took another chunk of his soul, so... He's, he's walking around in tatters, but on the other hand, he has certain strengths now and, and powers that he's going to come to grips with. Um, on the same time, he's not human. The rest of the group is kind of starting to distrust exactly where he stands. Um, so with that, the group turns around and starts taking out her lackeys. Oric goes over with one of the arrow, the last of his arrows that had paralytic poison and stabbed one of the spellcasters who uh, had recovered and was now attacking the group. Vanifer threw a fireball, which cooked the group and, and, uh, and again weakened them. Even though many of them are resistant to fireballs, she hurts when she does it. Um, and, you know, things were, again, looking pretty grim. Uh, and also in that fireball, even though he's resistant, uh, Brock, the wizard, drops. And uh, then we start going with a carousel of who's dropping and how fast Oriana can go between bodies to try to save everybody. She ended up making three successful medicine checks to stabilize people who were down in the course of the night. She was rolling really well for that, which was cool. Um, she also managed to finish off the flame guard who was uh, dueling with Oric. Um, so that was, that was impressive. He barely got to hit Oric more than a couple of times. So Oric is in rough shape, but um, Oriana came through and delivered a pair of kicks and, and uh, killed him. There was a flame genocide sorceress who was in the room who was helping out the group. However, Terran, with his newfound life, got up and wrecked her. Just annihilated her with his strike, using up his maneuverability dice as he's a battlemaster warrior, a fighter, and uh, knocked her down. She's like, screw this noise. So she teleported, using Misty Step to get away from him and into back into the hall, trying to get behind the wizards. To which, Terran took care of his business with the fire, lesser fire elemental fire cat that was attacking him, just, just obliterated it, and turned around, chased her down, and pff, finished her off. So, Vanifer's guardians were getting fewer and fewer, and the group started to converge, figuring they need to finish her off. To be fair, Vanifer was running out of spells. She was in a kind of a desperate situation. On the other hand, she was regenerating. Um, did I not say that the encounter, these encounters aren't exactly verbatim? I changed things up, meet the players where they are at, and, uh, yeah. So... <clears throat> The uh, So she, while well, all the group is coming up, she's annoyed with Don Ludd, who is uh, pops out of the portal and starts attacking her. She uses up all of her shields, defending herself. And uh, then Oric comes up, because he's getting help, he's, he's dangerous. Terran eventually strides back. Terran is using his Eldritch Bolts blasting things, because he's in such rough shape right now. Uh, that he can't take a round of reasonable combat with, uh, with with even Vanifer. So he stays back and is blasting, but that still leaves strong fighters up by her. She takes Tinder Strike, her super magical dagger, and she puts Oric down, stabs him hard, and he drops. And, of course, this means Oriana's going to have to run and try to save him, too. She manages to get Brock stabilized and rifles through him and gets a healing potion in so she can get him conscious. Uh, then Oriana jets over to try to save Oric, but it quickly becomes clear that Vanifer is weakening, uh, especially when Terran comes up and again just unloads on her. Uh, he doesn't even need his maneuverability dice, he's very strong, he has a nice weapon, 
and you know all the things working together, he can he can dish out quite a bit. So he has her poised on the precipice, and I think it may have been Oriana who delivered the death blow. I'm trying to remember. She was down to th three hit points, and then somebody came in and bam. I, I'm pretty sure it was Oriana, actually. Um, so Vanifer drops, and she's suddenly consumed with fire. All that's left is a ring, and, of course, Tinder Strike the dagger. So the group won. And at this moment, just as she's dying, the player for Geth walks in the door. It's just how it worked. He was running a bit late. So... The group finishes them off, and then they have to think, what are we going to do? There are no enemies here, but we can still hear sounds of screams and combat outside in the temple. So they barricade themselves in. They lock the door that was picked to let them in, and uh, basically they hole up. Uh, they find out that the portal leading into the the, the uh, Vanifer's private room is actually unlocked by having a flaming weapon, which Vanifer always had Tinder Strike on her, so that wasn't a deal for her, but it made it very difficult for almost anybody else to follow her. Well, it just so happens that uh, early on they found a plus one flaming sword. I didn't attach any great significance to. Uh, when Don Ludd showed up, he's like, I'll use a sword. So they give it to him, and he consecrated it as his Pact Blade. So, he's got a nice pack blade now, which flames. Flames black red fire, just fitting for Dispater's uh, influence. So, he was able to go through the portal without even intending to. If he hadn't had that flaming weapon in his hand, it would have just passed right through. But he was able to get into the room by fluke. So he goes in. And uh, at the same at the time, the person to pick up Tinder Strike was Gath, the sorcerer. So he goes in with him, and they start looting. Um, they fall victim to some very nasty poison, uh, black lotus poison, which is on uh, one of her chests. And they were pulling it out, and all of a sudden, Gath falls victim to it. Gath, however, ends up rolling a twenty on his saving throw and becomes immune to black black lotus poison, um, which is interesting. Uh, so that, uh, works out. They are able to get all of her treasure, which netted them some very nice magical items. She, I, I bumped up what they gave her because I don't think they've been getting a very fair cross sampling of all the different magic and different things that are available, uh, in the game. So I gave them a stack of wands and some potions and a couple of items here and there. No ridiculous over the top weapons yet or anything like that. That's not the right boss for that. Vanifer is primarily magic-oriented, so they got some of her nice magical items. Um, which they're still unraveling and deciphering. Um, they've they found out some secrets. Some of them are still hidden from them. But uh, they're trying to figure out how to uh, haul back about 600 pounds of noble clothes that they can make a lot of money off of. Um, fortunately, there's a princess in a town not too far away who loves clothes. Um, so the group found enough gear to re-equip themselves and everything. They took a long rest uh, because the undead had basically killed off the rest of the fire cult. I didn't find any of the rest of the fighting inside the, the temple to be all that compelling. So I just let the undead deal with it and leave it as a wash. However, the undead did come in, check out the, the group, see if anybody needed killing. They took one look at Terran and turned and walked away, which the group is kind of paranoid. They spent about five minutes trying to decide if he's a vampire or not. He's not. He's a shade, but he couldn't elucidate that. So they're like, yeah, you're saying you're not a vampire, but that's just what a vampire would say. It was quite hilarious. Um, <laughs> notable quote of the night. Uh... <laughs> When Donlug came back out through the portal, he took one look at Vanifer and said, You are one twisted lady. And she said, I kind of counted on you staying in there for a while. And he said, Lady, I wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot flaming... Well, I mean, that wasn't so nice, but it was memorable. So that will probably be a quote that will be used at some point again in the gaming future. One of those things that tends to reverberate between uh, sessions through the groups. 
Um, all told, they got a chunk of experience. They're ready to level. I think almost everybody can level, which is cool. Uh, they have tons of new items to play with, um, and they're getting ready for their next strike. They still have not been down into the true temples yet, though, so there's a, still a fair amount of gameplay left. This campaign is not done yet. It's got quite a ways to go, but they have killed two now of the prophets of uh, the elements. They killed Erisi, and they've killed Vanifer, so they know about Marlos, Ernriel, the Earth Prophet. Uh, they know there's a water one out there, because of course there is, so lots left to go. But, now the others know that they've killed Vanifer, so time to step up the game a little bit. Should be fun. This is what's been happening down here in my dungeon lair. I hope you've enjoyed the story, and uh, continue to stay tuned. You will be able to find us here at the Lair of Omnisai in my State of the Dungeon address. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have many successful adventures of your own. Farewell. <laughs>